Good afternoon, everyone. Everybody from the management of the college to the students, the organizers, thanks for giving me this opportunity and I'll try to make best use of the next 18 minutes to share my journey leading the Infosys tennis platform and uh, experimenting and understanding what can AI do in the sport of tennis. We'll talk about a lot of things, existential questions with, with the chat GPT hitting the mainstream consciousness. We all have a love-hate relationship with, with AI. How is AI going to help me and is AI going to really replace me? So on the one hand, we're curious to know what can AI do and on the other hand, we also are a little anxious, will it make us all redundant and will we all become the zoo animals that we now treat some of the best animals in the, in the history of the world? Uh, hopefully, we'll walk with some perspectives from here. I'm going to talk about four things. AI in uh, post-production, in the, in the, how does AI help in creation of the highlights, completely automating the highlights? How does AI, then we'll talk a little bit about live production, which is a very, very exciting, sp we all love content, whether it's cricket or tennis. How is live content produced and what are the challenges in producing live content and what is the role that AI could potentially play there? Then we'll talk a little bit about what is the role AI has been doing in coaching and how there is a huge disconnect between what coaches expect out of AI and what today AI is capable of delivering and the promise that lays, lies in this space. And lastly, we'll conclude it with a little bit of a philosophical debate of the man versus machine, pardon the gender insensitivity, it's person versus the machine, but man versus the machine rhymes a little well, so we'll have it as man versus the machine for the first minute. So this was one of the first innovations that we uh, pioneered for both Australian Open and the Roland Garros, where when a match is being played, we get the, the relay from the OTT provider. Uh, we take that and completely cut the points and uh, label all the points, identify uh, which are the interesting points, which are the dramatic points, uh, which are the crucial points, have it all ready such that if you want the highlights at the end of a set, it can immediately produce the highlights. And, and human beings and machines are somewhat different. You can see that uh, uh, in this debate has been raging. When Amazon started, we had the online bookstore. The main accusation against that at that time was, I can't feel the rustle of the paper. Right? That, that used to be the argument about the no virtual books. The bookstore was virtual. And if I walk into a real bookstore, I'll be able to flip the pages, feel the smell of the paper. Well, fair argument, but an unfair one for an online world. And then the tables were turned because your bookstore had a physical layout and that layout is not capable of changing whoever enters the bookstore. But on Amazon, the moment you pick one book, it thinks something about you and it is now capable of completely changing the layout of the store for you, which a physical store can never imagine to do. It's going to have a simple format for every person that walks into the bookstore. So it's important for us also to understand where does the AI have an advantage over the machine, human being and where does the AI fall behind when it comes to the human beings. And one of the earliest things was the duration of the highlights. If you ask a human being to create a five minute highlights of a match, they've spent a lot of time creating that. And at the last minute you tell them, listen, we don't have five minutes, we only have three and a half minutes, change that to a three and a half minute highlight. The human being will throw a fit, machine will never complain. It can immediately create a three and a half minute and that's the advantage of the of the machine, but the human spirit is the human spirit. So we did this, we created the timeline, and, and then we wanted our highlights to also have a narrative. When you're watching a highlights, like a tennis match in a mobile phone, many a times you don't even realize when did the set end? Because it's such a small screen, who won the set? So it was important for us to establish the narrative. The AI had to establish the narrative of the match, not merely pick the most interesting points and give it to you where you're seeing interesting point after interesting point. So the key thing was AI to not lose the narrative of, of the match also. And that we were able to do in a completely automated fashion where we get the set summary at the end of the set, include that as a part of the highlights so that the narrative is also established. Lastly, there have been too many accidents in the past in human civilization where automation, the early generation of automation will have accidents. And some of these accidents will be fatal. And, and here is 
uh, known history. There are several, but I will pick one history. In the 80s, the cars started having automatic windows. Till then, it was roll up, roll down window. Some of you may remember, right? It is a roll up or a roll down window. And the early accidents that were preventable if only it had been designed well, where whenever a car went into a river by many, by an accident, if it drowned, earlier people could just roll down the window and come out. But the electronic roll up or roll down window would not work under water ever. So, you had several fatalities in, in the early days of automation, where what was a roll up, roll down, when it became an electronic uh, action led to accidents. So, the most important thing here is for AI to be very, try and be very smart, but it still has to be humble. It should not be supremely, it can be very confident, but never arrogant. And an and, and ode to that was when we create the highlights, we said, we will show you only the AI selected points. But the moment a human being wants to override it, then you can watch that we will provide them with, with all the points of the match such that the human being can take control. Now, this is not a life or death situation. It's a simple tennis highlights at the end of the day. But the principle of AI should try to be smart, but never be too cocky about itself is a very important principle that one has to remember when doing any of these kind of AI experiments. Human spirit is, when AI is able to automate this, you think the media people who are sitting in the content team will say that, okay, all my creative energy has now been automated. I accept defeat and walk away. That's not the human spirit. So the human spirit is always to, okay, if you're going to, going to do this, let me, and I'll give you, there are several historical examples. For example, in the turn of the century, the turn of the previous century, when the camera was getting invented, till then, there were a lot of artists who made a living by just drawing portraits and various other things. If, I, if, I, if there was a king who loved his queen a lot, there was no camera to take a picture of, of his queen and only an artist had to commis be commissioned and, and the portrait be drawn. But when the camera was invented, photorealism went out of the world. So the artists had an existential question. If I made a living by just drawing subjects however well or bad I was drawing it, now my, my, li my livelihood is being challenged with the invention of a new piece of technology, the camera. And it gave rise to a brilliant, brilliant response from the artists, impressionism, and then it went on to abstract art, modern, surrealism, and all the movements. So what the camera cannot draw is what the human beings are now drawing. The subjects have become way too complex from being the photorealistic subjects that it used to be the turn of the century. Same spirit we can now see in the content producers. What they are doing is they are taking what was essentially a landscape orientation, converting the content into a, the match is produced in a 4 by 3 screen. This is the next revolution which we may see very soon. All our content screens, including this projector screen that we have here, have a landscape orientation, not our mobile phones, which are our closest friends. Right? Instagram does not even have a landscape orientation and YouTube Shorts supports only vertical videos. So we are in the middle of watching this thrilling evolution from a landscape orientation to a vertical orientation. And the human beings are the first to jump here. AI is lagging behind. We are working on seeing how can we do this kind of a cropped video also, edited, very well edited and very cropped video. But today, it's the domain of the, of the human beings. And, and also, there, is, there are 10 cameras that are shooting a tennis match. That means if a match is three hours long, at the end of it, you have 30 hours of footage. But what you watched on the TV was only three hours. Three hours of camera footage that has been sourced from these various cameras, right? Now, what the human beings do is they will access footage. The editors are capable of accessing footage that was never even shown on the TV. AI can't even compete because it's an unfair game at the, to begin with. If you're going to take content which is not even broadcast on the TV and use it for creating highlights, it's going to be wonderful. So these are the areas where the game is now being played. As AI is saying, I will automate your job, the human res response to that is, okay, I'm going to take the game a little higher. Let's see how well we play it here, which takes us to the next point, which is live production. In live production, it's a brilliant and a very, very nerve-wracking problem, whether it's in cricket or in tennis, but I'll give it in the context of tennis. A live point has been played. It's a brilliant point. In tennis, between two points, a player is, a server is given a maximum of 25 seconds to serve the first serve. 
if they don't then they get a called for a foul so you the 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 director of the tv program if they want to show a replay of the previous point that has been played they have a challenge which is a nerve wracking challenge you have to pick from one of these 10 cameras which is the camera which has the best footage you have to make that decision very quickly then you have to go back in time and say where you are going to pick up the replay action and replay action can be slow motion which means 5 seconds can become 10 seconds and if you use ultra slow motion 5 seconds will become 20 seconds so how far back into the previous point are you going to go and catch the action is the first question and then you have to do that replay till the main winner the point concluding winner is shown because if you cut before that then you don't even see the most important event of the previous point and then you have to hope that you're not too late to catch the next serve live before it's being served so you have three problems to be solved here one is which is the camera angle there are 10 cameras which camera has the best replay how far back am i going to go back in time from where i'm going to pick up the replay and then hope that i don't lose too much time on the replay that i can't cut back into live action and the reason i say this is 25 seconds is the maximum amount of time that is required if you are a player like rafael nadal nadal usually takes 23 24 25 seconds before he serves he's a very patient player he uses most of the time but if you are a nick rigios between points he just rushes absolutely he gives an on average six to seven to eight seconds time breathing time between one point and the next point so it becomes a much much more tougher problem so the next time you're watching a match featuring nadal which has a lot of replays but another match featuring Krigios where you're not able to see the replays you'll be able to empathize with the plight of the director and the challenge that the person is facing and why they're not able to show a lot of replays so the this is another fantastic place where AI can play a role. Today, it's not yet playing a role. This is this place where we all want to be able to. So how you show the replay and, and you give a little bit of the hangover of the previous point live and then you cut back replay and then do your best such that you can cut back to live action. Which brings us to AI for player analysis for coaching. This again, having done highlights, we were able to take any uh, match, splice and dice it into n number of uh, various aspects whether it is based on the stats or, or various aspects we were able to on the stats if you want to see all the aces the winners unforced errors or net approach points all of these can be easily extracted we didn't stop with that then we went to rally analysis to show by rally length and then we went to stroke analysis to show by how may, how well did you play ground strokes how many winners did you hit on your ground strokes how many unforced errors how many forced errors so it was possible to uh, take a match and even give custom analysis like show me all Djokovic's second serve points that he won on critical points while serving down the tee you can get incredibly specific on your query and still get results of this kind but all of these still we do all of this and still the coaches don't take these kind of analysis too seriously because the what they expect is something completely different and what we are capable of doing in the ai analytics is at one level there is a gap and that's the gap that we all want to bridge it's it's wonderfully called the street light fallacy the street light fallacy some of you might have heard is the one where a drunkard uh, having lost uh, his keys is searching for his keys under a street light right and and some passerby walks by and asks what are you doing here he says i've lost my keys i went what did you do before you here before coming here he said i went to a restaurant and i danced at a floor and all of that and uh, but I'm, I'm i've lost my keys and i'm searching it for you person asks uh, and, uh, are you sure you lost it here he says i'm not sure i might have lost it most likely in the restaurant or in the dance floor where i was dancing but both those places are now closed and this is everywhere else it's dark this is the only place where there is a little bit of a light so that's why i'm searching my keys here right and and we all recognize the stupidity of this situation uh, sports analytics also to a, some extent suffers from the uh, a fallacy from the street light fallacy because we can provide the analytics of what we are capable of providing rather than exactly what the coaches want the coaches want much much more sophisticated things they want things like tell me the tendencies of the players give me the mindset of the player i want to understand psychologically how does a player 
what is the person thinking now after losing a crucial game are they deflated or are they still intense right that's what i want to know not how uh, he played a winner or how he played a forced error or whether he hit a return error those are incidentals outcomes as we would call it i'm more interested in the what is the controllable for the player what are the variables that a player can control and is the player controlling those variables very very well and and you will find time and again in most of the sports that the analytics tends to be outcome oriented analytics rather than controllable oriented analytics and you will find again and again some coaches will be labeled as a, he is a traditional coach he doesn't know the importance of analytics because they are demanding what is called as this this kind of controllable analytics that's what they are mostly interested in not the outcome analytics <clears throat> so we are trying this this is a very very tough one but we are doing our best to to be able to get there which brings me to the last part of my session that i want to share my perspectives with you man versus machine now in tennis you can see as you can see on the other far end is sitsipas a fantastic player he's playing a shot and the ball is aimed to the body of djokovic now before hitting the single shot djokovic has so many decisions to make should i play this as a backhand or should i run around and play this as a forehand should i hit it to that corner or should i hit it to this corner should i hit it well inside the corner of the court such that the probability that it will fall in the court is higher or should i go for the very very high extremity where if i hit it in the chance that my opponent will be able to take will become much much lesser should i hit it at moderate speed or should i hit it at a very very high speed in this fashion djokovic is required to make at a very very split second level tens of decisions for every shot for every single second even when he is not playing the ball he has to come back to the what is called as a neutral position in the tennis court so that he is well equipped to play, play both this side and this side even when he is not playing he has to make decisions now imagine how many decisions he has to make when he is actually playing so this is not just confined to tennis alone and and you have the great roger federer talking about the role of split second decision making and he simply says there is a lot of decisions that has to be made in the in the in the split second in the middle of a, a point not a match in the middle of a point and you cannot aim or hope to get them all right but the most important thing is you cannot regret and sit down and say i have made a mistake i can't continue you have to continue despite making mistakes you have to continue with the pain and that's the most important philosophical quote that you can ever get from federer because tennis is not any different from cricket in cricket the captain has to make a fielding choice he has to make a decision of who is going to bowl and then the bowler has to make a decision of what is the type of ball that i'm going to now bowl for this fielder the, the decision the amount of decisions we have to make in any sport are very high but it's not just sport even in life we have to make so many decisions at at every minute should i continue to listen to this session or can i walk out of this session right can i can i take a look at my phone or or should i pay full attention to this there are so many decisions that we are default making as we spend every minute in in our life so the quest for ai would be for, to evolve and come to a place where it can help us it can share what it thinks is the best decision for us provided we are willing to reveal everything our, about our life all the important events all the actions that we are doing and all the thoughts that we are possessing in our head we come to a place where we are willing to share that with the ai and in return we ask ai to help us to be the best person that we could ever be thanks a lot for the opportunity